Hey everyone, welcome to DeFi Digs. Today we're going to look at leveraged yield farming. We're going to do it through the lens of Tulip Garden, which is on Solana. Uh, there are many other leveraged yield farming protocols. Francium is one of them. Um, there is also Alpha Homora, which is on Ethereum and Avalanche. You have Taro, you have Alpaca, um, probably some other ones I'm missing. But we're going to use Tulip Garden because um, it is just a great protocol. It has a lot of different features. I have a position open that I can show you guys how to close out of. Um, and they recently updated their protocol as well. Um, we will cover off on Tulip and kind of fly over that first, but I want the second half of the video to really be focused on the different aspects of leverage yield farming, um, You know why you might enter certain pairs, um, what the risks are and things like that. So it does require some knowledge of other topics, you know, liquidity providing, um, leverage, impermanent loss, borrowing, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't have a thorough knowledge of those topics, you might be a little confused, but feel free to stick around and check it out. Okay, so let's check out Tulip first. Um, before we get in, nothing in this video is financial advice. Everything's for educational purposes only. Leverage yield farming in particular is very risky so do not enter a position until you really understand what's going on so as i said tulip garden recently just updated their protocol they have done a number of updates since it came out the team seems to be very active um, i really like it i really like the ux and like i said there's a few different things we can do here so before we dig into the leverage yield farming let's talk about these other more simple um, features here so the swap is pretty straightforward you can swap into various other assets it uses jupiter which is a dex aggregator on solana so you can just do it right in tulip which is nice uh, nothing too crazy there strategy vaults is new they have two assets you can deposit into these pools or vaults and they will use a number of various strategies um, to gain yield on them um, they don't have a ton of information as to what these strategies are right now, but you can do it with USDC and you can do it with Radium. The USDC pool um, is about 5%. Um, you can then deposit that token that you get into a friction vault and gain some additional yield. Friction is an options strategy protocol that does um, covered calls and cash secured puts that is going to be covered in a different video, but I do really like that protocol as well. Um, so that is the strategy vaults. The auto vaults is going to be your regular um, LP position that you might be in Radium or Orca, but then you stake the LP tokens in Tulip and it's going to auto compound um, your yield. So if you're in the Radium Serum pool on Radium, you would add liquidity into that pool and then uh, Tulip is going to automatically claim whatever tokens you're getting paid out in, probably Radium and Serum, and it's going to sell them and add to your position. In this case, they wouldn't need to sell because it's the same assets. But um, if you're in, you know, an, uh, a non-Radium pair, it would sell the Ray tokens and then add into your position, just automatically compounding that yield. So if you aren't interested in the leverage part and just want to gain a little bit additional APY, you can always stake your LP tokens in the auto vault. The lending section allows you to lend out individual assets and these lending pools are used in the leveraged farming section. So if you just want to leverage one single asset instead of enter into a liquidity pool, um, you can do that here. They have a number of different assets. Um, they vary in APY, and these obviously go up and down based on the amount that is supplied and borrowed. So fairly low risk here. Um, of course, depending on the utilization ratio, if it's 100% utilized, you would have to wait for that to come down before you could withdraw. Um, but this is a decent option here if you just you know kind of want to play a little bit safer. Okay, let's dig into leverage yield farming, which is kind of the meat and potatoes of this video. Um, so in leverage yield farming, you borrow um, a portion of your position in order to lever up your actual, you know, yield. So um, you can effectively farm with $2,000 when you only actually have $1,000. Um, you would deposit 
thousand dollars worth of one of these assets <clears throat> and then borrow the other thousand dollars and you would be earning yield as if you had a two thousand dollar position whenever you borrow something you of course um, have to pay it back and there is also a liquidation price that you tend to have to manage as well so we're going to look at the um, solana usdc pool to begin with um, to kind of keep it simple there are two options you can always pair with a stable asset which is going to be a little bit less risky but will expose you to some impermanent loss um, you can also do uh you know two separate tokens like ray and sol which are both volatile that's going to add some risk but potentially offset the impermanent loss risk we'll touch on that after we uh, cover the stable coin pairing so one of the reasons why i really like tulip is they give very detailed um kind of breakdowns here of everything that's happening uh, you can supply 50 50 uh, into a, a pair like you would in a normal liquidity pool um, but the easiest thing to do would be to just supply one side of it and then borrow the other side we're going to look at 2x leverage because that is a little bit simpler to illustrate um, we're supplying one side and then we're just borrowing the equivalent on the other side in 2x leverage uh, many of these protocols tulip included will allow you to select which asset you want to borrow so this one is the solana slider this is the usdc slider which is the other side of the pool generally speaking you would want to borrow the asset that is the lower apr um, if it's a high borrow rate then that's going to cut into your yield in this case solana is 15.7 and usdc is 11.6 so we're going to borrow usdc um, you also wouldn't want to borrow solana in this case because um, that would effectively make you short solana um, but we're not going to do that so usdc is what we're borrowing it will break down um, our borrow rate we're paying again 11.6 percent our total apy on 2x leverage in this position is about 84 percent so if we were to supply 10 sol it will break down each aspect so the total asset in this position after we borrow is going to be 10 sol which we're supplying and then the 1134 usdc which we're borrowing breaks it down further assets supplied 10 sol assets borrowed 1134 usdc if we were to crank this leverage up you'll see that both sides of the assets in position row <clears throat> increase to maintain the 50 50 balance um, we borrow more usdc and then we actually now start to swap some and all that's doing is swapping um, the difference in the amount of usdc that you're borrowing versus what you're matching on the other side so it's going to in this case sell about 250 usdc for sol and put that into your um, sol side of this position so let's stick with 2x leverage for now one other thing I really like about Tulip is it has this simulator which really helps illustrate kind of what's going on. So on 2x leverage, Solana right now is about $113. This red bar represents our liquidation price and then these um, our, uh, lines going up to the right kind of represent the profit that we're, we're going to be making. But let's focus on this liquidation price. So at 2x leverage, our liquidation price is 38.56 so sol would have to drop down to 38.56 in order for us to get liquidated if we go up to 3x leverage that jumps up to about 69 70 dollars so um quite a bit our yield does go from 84 to 135 now, because we are paired with a stable coin, we will be exposed to impermanent loss. Um, the impermanent loss up to, you know, if Sol were to double, obviously USDC is gonna stay flat at $1. So if Sol were to double, um, the impermanent loss in that scenario is right around 5%, which will definitely get you know, outpaced 
by the farm APY. So I wouldn't worry too much about um, impermanent loss. I just wouldn't let something ride, you know, a 5x in, in a stable pair. Um, these are generally safer because the only way that you can get liquidated is if sold dumps as opposed to the other asset going up, which can happen in a pair that we're going to look at right now. So let's look at Ray Serum. And I'm selecting this pool for a reason. Ideally, when you have two, when you have a pair that you're going to leverage your farm in, and it is not a stable coin, you're exposing yourself to additional risk because this can go up, which will affect your liquidation price. You really only want to enter a pair in this case, if it's two assets that you're bullish on, or you're borrowing the one that maybe you're slightly less bullish on, or two assets that are, are you know, perfectly correlated or very close to being correlated. That way, um, the risk of this asset outperforming, the risk of your borrowed asset outperforming your supplied asset is low, um, and you don't have, you know, you have less risk of impermanent loss. So. Um, the reason I chose this pool right here is because they are very correlated. This chart, the candles represent um, the price of radium, and the orange line uh, graph is serum. So as you can see, super correlated. I've been in this pool for a few months now, and I haven't really had to manage it at all. Um, in fact, radium has you know slightly outperformed serum over the last couple months, which is actually ideal because that is the side of the um, pair that, that I supplied. So let's just walk through it really, really quick. Let's say we supply 111 radium. Um, we're borrowing, since we're on 2x leverage, we're borrowing the equivalent amount, which is 172 serum. That puts our, well, our current price of radium over serum is $1.56, so it's 1.56 times the price of serum. If that were to go down all the way to 0.53, so serum would actually have to um, be higher in value than radium by quite a bit, then we would get liquidated. If we go up to 3x, it's right around one. So as soon as, if I were in this pool on 3x leverage, um, and I saw radium start to get really close to the price in serum, I'd start to get nervous. Um, but 2x leverage quite a ways away and since we're correlated so strongly here there is not much risk in impermanent loss and there's not much risk in liquidation as long as this trend continues which is no guarantee that that could happen you know something could happen with serum where the value skyrockets and then if we don't react prop, um, quickly enough in that pool we would be screwed so if you're uncertain, um, always start with a stable pair. The only way you can get wrecked in that is if you're over levered and the asset that you supply dumps relative to USDC. Want to also quickly show you the your positions section when you do enter into a position. Um, it gives you kind of some detailed information here. It does tell you how much you've gained from the LP, which is cool. Um, it tells you your debt value, your equity value and the total position value as well. The kill buffer um, is basically what will liquidate you if it gets to zero. So as long as you're above zero, um, you are fine. It tells you your daily APR, your APY, this updates regularly. Um, and then you can also add additional collateral if your debt ratio is looking unhealthy. You can also borrow more if I wanted to just lever up to 3x here. Um, I could do that within um, within the section. And if I want to close, similarly, I can do the same thing. I can do a partial close if I only want to close um, a, a little piece of it. And then I have the option to either minimize trading, which is going to pay back my debt and then just give me the remaining tokens from both sides. Um, or I can convert to just serum, um, which will sell the radium tokens for serum and just deposit serum into my wallet. So a couple options there, which is cool. Um, we usually end these videos by looking at the tokenomics. There isn't too much to look at here at this point. Um, the Tulip token is going to be a governance token, um, on-chain governance that's not available yet. 
um, and it's supposed to capture you know things like platform fees and whatnot. I'm sure they'll be staking, but um, that is not released yet. So if you're looking for that, you will have to wait a little bit. But the protocol itself is super cool. Um, like I said, several different options here depending on what kind of you know investor and how active you want to be. So pop in and check it out. Um, if you guys found the video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Um, if I missed anything, if you have any recommendations, anything you want to see, any ideas, hit me up on Twitter or hit me in the comments. Catch you guys in the next one.